Welcome to NYP Music Theory. Today I will show you step by step how to harmonize a choral melody in the style of J.S. Bach. The melody is taken from R6 Albert Riemann Schneider edition. After that, I will show you the analysis of Bach's harmonization. Let's get started. This choral is in F major with four phrases. As we look at the key signature, one flat and the first note starts with F. At the end, the melody also ends with F. So we confirm this is in F major. We can hum the melody or using solfege to sing it through. Step two is to tackle one phrase at a time. Let's look at phrase one. It starts with an upbeat. Most likely, F A can be harmonized with one chord, F A C. So I put a one and one here and then jump an octave, which we have seen this example in the previous chorales. After I confirm the tonic chord, I will jump to the cadence and see if it is a perfect cadence or imperfect cadence or any modulation there. The melody given is an A and then a C. According to F major, this C is the dominant note, C. It can be harmonized with a five chord. But since this dominant note has two beats, so we can use the first dominant to harmonize it with one C. We have seen one C is a declaration of five. So it will be good to have one C five one at the cadence point. Now we work backwards and join these three notes. G, A, B flat, Re, Mi, Fa. This G can be found in five chord or two chord or seven chord. But I will choose 5B at this moment because in the beginning, usually we use 1, 4, 5 chord more often. Then this A, we can harmonize it with a 1 chord because Re, Mi and T, Do is a common pattern. The last note in bar 1, B flat, goes to the dominant note, Fa, So the B flat belongs to 4 chord. So I will choose the 4B to harmonize it in the bass. Then we can see the fa so la so opposite direction. Then we are almost done. Before we proceed to phrase two, we can check parallels first. F and F is an eight. We can write the number of intervals so that we can check the parallels easily. F to A is a third, regardless of simple or compound interval. E to G is a third. F to A is a third. So we can see that they are parallels parallels but parallel thirds are good and consonants now we have contrary motion here and d to b is a six c to c is an octave an octave and then goes to three a to a this is not considered as parallel because they are just a long note and repeated notes so it is not a parallel octave all right we are done with the first phrase then the second phrase Again, look at the cadence, G to A. Will it be any modulation? There are no new notes. And we can check from the related key chart. There won't be any suitable modulation. Because if we end on A, A minor will have a G sharp as the leading note. So we stay in F major here. And immediately, we just write down 5 to 1 in F major. After that, we work backwards and see from the beginning of phrase two, this is a D, like a scale going down. La, so, fa, mi. This La, I will choose a four, fa, la, do, B flat, D, F. And then want to go contrary motion with the soprano. La, so, fa, so. So here is a three. C to C is an octave. B flat to E, I will choose Fa Mi. Here is also a common practice. When we have a Fa Mi, this can be the seventh note of a 5 7. So T Re Fa, this is a B flat from here, C E G B flat. Fa usually resolves downwards to Mi, that is, the seventh note resolves downwards by step. Then the, the bass will be good to go contrary motion. T Do. So this is a common practice and a common pattern. Then we are done with the second phrase. Double check with the intervals, F. If you can 
read the intervals visually, then you don't have to write out the numbers. But if you are a beginner, not very sure about how to check parallels, you can do it in this way. C to G is a 5. Then F to A is a 3. So no parallel fifths, no parallel octaves. As we proceed to the third phrase, we may consider the modulation. Again, we will look at the cadence first. This time we have a D to C. Most likely, we can go to C major. According to the related key chart, the C major is the dominant key of F major. But in here, I choose to modulate to A minor because I want to have a color change that is from the major mode changed to a minor mode. As we look at the D to C, it can be A minor 5, 7. I would expect a G sharp somewhere in the alto or tenor because this is in A minor, but we'll do it later. Then here is the A minor chord, A, C, E. Then this chord, I will harmonize it as E, G sharp, B, D. So a 5, 7 to 1. The approach chord to this 5 can be a 2 or 2B. I will choose 2B5-1, but in A minor, as we know, there is no B flat. So I will expect later on when we fill in the inner part, there will be a B natural. All right, then let's work backwards and see how we change from F major to C major. Let's move a little bit back to the first phrase. We start from the end of phrase 2, take the F major 1, equals to C major 4 as a pivot chord. Then we solve to a 1B because the melody given is a C. So I take this as a C, E, G chord. Then we'll go to the second line. Previously, we have the 1B. So we can drop the notes here to double check with um, parallels. This is a C goes to D and then an E goes to F. This is a parallel, but parallel 6. Now, I would like to use a passing 6-3 here, Mi, Re, Do in C major. So sometimes we said the 7-B can be a substitute of a 5. So it looks like a cadence. Mi, Re, Do, then the top note is a Fa, Mi. Just now we have used Fa, Mi and Ti, Do already. But this time we'll change some other progressions. Why not we use a passing 6-3? The E harmonize with another E. This one I have to explain because usually we said uh, the one chord, the one chord, tonic chord, we don't double the third. But if the previous note goes from a contrary direction, that will be fine. And here is a two octaves apart. So this is also acceptable. Then we will have Fa, Mi, Re, Do. These are parallel thirds. We also have to check the connection between the C major and the A minor. This is called an abrupt modulation. As we can see, this is an A minor 2B. And we are expect to have an F sharp to avoid augmented second. We will look into it when we look at the inner parts later. As we finish the third phrase, the A minor chord acts as the 3 in F major. Pivot chord going back to F major towards the end. Here is a smooth progression of first inversion, 3B, 4B, 3B, 2B. It is a common practice in the Renaissance period and also in Baroque period. They are parallels, but parallel six are always fine. Then the end with two supertonic in the melody, we harmonize it with two chords, 2B, 571, a cadential formula. Now let's go to the next step. This is step five. Fill in the inner parts. That is the alto and the tenor. But do not add decorations at this moment. Let's check the notes vertically. F, F, we need the A and C. After the bar line, still a one chord, F, F, A, C. Try to put the tenor higher near the middle C area. The next chord is a five. C, E, G, and this G is supposed to be repeated, that is the fifth. In order to make the inner part smoother, so I double the fifth. Just check, see if there is any parallels. 
1 F F A C B flat chord B flat B flat D F 1 C5 remember to check 1 C we have to double the fifth C C E G then this F means tenor and bass have the same F F F A C so we have done the first phrase second phrase fill in the inner part B flat D F here we have doubled the fifth the reason is if I double the root, the B flat and the tenor will have a parallel octave. So in order to avoid this, I will just double the fifth. And for this five chord C, 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 E, the fifth is omitted. The reason is if I put a G here, the B flat and F is a fifth. And the C to G will be another fifth that will cause the parallel fifth. So in this case, we have to omit the fifth. Next chord C, E, G, B flat. All the four notes are here. F chord, F, F, A, C. No parallels. 5, C, C, E, G. And then 1, F, A, C, C. This time here also double the fifth. Because we usually don't double the third. The third is already in the soprano. If we double the bass, it's also possible that we have F, F, A, C here. Now come to the third phrase. C, C, E, G goes to D, F, F, A. For 2, B chord, we double the third. It's always the norm. Double check this F and F. Go contrary motion. That will avoid parallels. This is 1, B. Just now I have explained why we double the third already. Then goes to 7, B. Now we have to insert the B natural because now we are in C major. B. D, which is the third, we usually double the third for a 7B chord, B, D, D, F. Then resolves to 1, 1 is C, E, now we have two Gs over here. See if we have parallels or not. The previous one, this is a B and D is a 6. 6 go to an octave, is not parallel, octave. Now comes to A minor, 2B, 5, 7, 1. Just now we mentioned that we need a B natural. If we put a B natural, the chord should be a B, D, F, a diminished chord. But since the next chord is a 5, 7, and we need a G sharp, in order to avoid an augmented second, so we sharpen the F, it becomes like a melodic minor, the 6 and the 7th note raised. So if we insert an F sharp here, the quality will become a minor chord, B, D, F sharp. So this is 2B and 5, 7 and 1 in A minor. Take the A minor 1 equals to F major 3, then change to 3B, A, A, C, E. 4B, B flat, D, D, F. This one, we double the third because this is contrary motion and it won't cause parallels. Once in a while, we can do it because of some voice leading. 3B, A, A, you can also check the A, A, goes from opposite direction. A, A, C, E. 2B, G, B flat, B flat, we double the third. Immediately check the approach chord is from contrary motion. G, B flat, B flat, D. Double check. This is auto and bass parallel third. That's no problem. 2B goes to 5-7. The 5-7 chord, we have C. The third is omitted. We have a G and then a B flat, the seventh note. Resolve downwards, downwards, and then we have the F, F, A, C. So now we are done with the fourth phrase. And from the beginning till the end, we go and check for consecutives again, especially the four parts. If we are in minor keys, we have to check for augmented intervals and a leading note sharpened. Now step seven, it's decoration time. I have added some non chord tones and also some suspensions. I'll show you line by line. The first line is the original harmonization with basic chords without decorations. The second line is with decorations. Let's look at the passing notes here. The original tenor part a to C is a third apart, so we can add passing note. Another one in the bass, C to E, add a passing note. 
And here is a C. We will add a passing note B natural because this is going to modulate to C major and the next note is an A. Let's focus on the first two phrases. Most of the time, we can decorate it with suspension, especially the inner parts. In the alto, this is down a second, G to F. So we can delay the F and putting an extra quaver in front of this F, so it becomes a 9-8 suspension. The 9, that means the G is an interval of a ninth from the bass. Then as it resolves downwards by step, it will be an 8. That means unison or an octave apart. Next one, we can do from the third beat of bar 1, C to B, another suspension. The C delay the B, and we can see the C becomes a dotted crotchet. And in this part, the C over D is a 7. We soft downwards to B, it becomes a 6. This is called 7, 6. And immediately, this 6 acts as a preparation. And then across the bar line, another 7 here is a suspension. Then we soft downwards, becomes a 6. In the alto part, the F delays the E, which is the chord tone, and make it a dotted rhythm. So the F above the bass C is a fourth. We soft downwards by step becomes a three. So here is a four three suspension. Then at the end of phrase two, we can also do the same thing as a nine eight suspension. But this time, because the chord tone is an E, so we can continue to do the suspension and resolution. So this is called suspensions in chain. Let's look at the second line. In bar 6, we have a couple of passing notes. When we find that two notes are a third apart, we can insert a passing note. Take note that there is a B natural here, as we have modulate or prepare to modulation of C major. Bar 7, we have a B natural to A, step down. In bar 7, we can add an auxiliary note between these two Bs but at the same time can do a suspension 6 over the bass and resolve to a 5th. So this is more gentle 6 to 5, not as common as the 9, 8 or 7, 6 or 4, 3. The fourth phrase, we have passing notes and also two times of a suspension. Here is E to D, so we delay the D and make this a 4-3 suspension. E to B in the bass is a 4th, so 4-3 suspension. And then at the same time, D is a preparation, and on top of the 4th beat here, D to C is treated as a 9th, resolved to 8. All right, so here are a lot of suspensions and decorations. After we have finished, we have to check one more time of all the notes, all the chord tones, non-chord tones, accidentals, everything. And then we play it and listen to it. But right now, I would like to bring you to Bach's harmonization for this tune. In Bach's harmonization, I want to draw your attention to the first bar, third and fourth beat. He used a tonicization here. And then the bass line changed the E to E flat by chromatic note resolved downwards. So if we think of the key signature, B flat, add an E flat, it will be B flat major 5 7 D to 1 B. But since towards the cadence, we cannot find another E flat. So this is not a real modulation. This is just a tonicization. For a while, it becomes the 5 7 D of 4. Then when it resolves downwards, this is a 4 B. After that, go back to F major. 5, 5B to 1. So we can see some passing notes. And then sometimes to fill up the quaver movement, he used subsidiary harmony note. That means these two notes belong to the same chord, but used in a weaker beat. So F major, 1, 5B, towards the end, also a 5, 5B to 1. So it's just a 1, 4, 5 chord again. Phrase 2. Still in F major, we can find 7, 6, 4, 3 suspension, one auxiliary note here, subsidiary harmony note, and then he used 
the same chord in this bar 4, F A C and then F A C. Use this as a pivot chord and go to the third phrase. We can see he used a 7, 6 and 9, 8 suspension, subsidiary harmony note. And here with a very special changing note, or we can call it escape tone or cambiata. Then this third phrase is all the way C major with a B natural in the tenor. This is 2, 5, 1. Then use this chord as a pivot chord to F major 5, then going back to F major. This is just a courtesy reminder for the B flat. 7, 6 suspension, and at the end, there is a 7th note that has a passing note. And the most interesting one is he introduced semi-quavers here and in bar 6, two times. All right, you may compare these two versions and see which one you like. But most importantly is we know how to use non chord tones, suspensions, tonicization, and modulations. Thanks for watching. If you find the video helpful, please like, share, and comment below. See you next time.